in the field, the validator control to make sure that, you know, you entered a value into it. But there's other kinds of, of validator controls too. There are, for example, validator controls that will validate that you've put something in it. Doesn't matter what, but you've put something in it. All right? There's other validator controls uh, that will validate to make sure that what you've entered in is numeric, or is a date, or is a string, or something like that. All right? So, you said some sort of structure. There is a structure. There would be validator controls. Underneath validator controls, there would be um, required field validators, data type validators, range validators, and so on down the line. So, yeah, I mean, think of it as a framework. Like if we were developing a room, let's say, for example, you know, what do they call that in a house? Like when you just have like the boards that show where everything's going to be? Like a skeleton? Blueprint? Well, the blueprint, yeah, the blue. You know, if I was building a house, I, if I was building a, a little room right here, I might go and put a corner thing going up, a corner thing going up, a corner thing going up, and the frame of the house, I guess. The frame of the house. Then what do you do? You fill in that frame by putting the walls up and putting eventually the pictures on the wall and the wallpaper and all that sort of stuff. So the other way to think of a framework is it is something that is that, that you're going to go and complete to do the whole thing. All right. So I, I guess look at the framework that way. Look at the framework as the fact that there is a structure built into it. So, you know, I guess for those reasons they call it a framework. Don't let that bother you. <laughs> you, you know, I, I mean, was just wondering if there was more to it, like there was some kind of components that actually were like laid out a template or something for your pages or, you know. Well, know. well um, maybe some of this will become clearer as, as we see examples of these controls and as we see things through the, the, the class, uh, throughout the course. All right. Okay. So this we're going to leave to on the side. And in a nutshell, this allows us to write code to manipulate these things. Right? So we could write code that would take two numbers that were in text boxes, multiply them together, and display the result in a label. So it's not the appearance, but it's sort of the processing behind the scenes that's going to take the components and, man and do something with them. All right? Manipulate them. All right. Let's make uh, a sample ASP.NET application. And let's play around with some of the controls that are available on them. And let's take a look at this. As we take a look at this, I'm going to talk about a couple different things. I'm going to talk about, first of all, how the components look, how the code file looks, and how you can incorporate like what you already know about HTML and CSS into this mode of development. So let's go and let's start Visual Studio. Visual Studio, again, is an IDE. What does IDE mean? Integrated Development Environment. It's a tool that helps you use a framework. Because this framework is big and it's complicated. All right? So in theory, you could develop all the things that we're going to develop here in Notepad. Crack open Notepad and start typing. You know, you're a better person than me if you ever do that and get any success in that. Right? Uh, because, um, uh, again, th there's so much in the framework that it's, that is, you know, you're going to need the help that you can get. All right. So let's go in and let's start Visual Studio.
go and let's create a application. Couple things I'm going to say. Be careful about what you name stuff. All right, you should have meaningful names. Uh, it gets a little irritating for me to see everyone turn in a website named website one, website two, website three, and so on. Now, I can't say for sure if I'll deduct when I see that, but if I'm in a bad mood when I'm grading, I'm bound to be a little harder on you and everyone else than if I'm in a good mood. All right? Your first page should be called default.aspx. All right? Um, other pages should have meaningful names. All right? Your pages should be complete web pages. Do keep in mind that my purpose in class is to demonstrate specific things. I am not developing complete pages. All right? So, therefore, you know, if, if you turn in a page that looks like one of my examples that I was just like kind of showing how to do something, that doesn't cut it. You all know HTML, or you should. Um, and you can go in and you can create the HTML uh, to, to make your page looks, look finished. Put a title on the page, make it look like a complete, a complete page. Add some CSS coding. Um, put forth at least some effort in making it look like a completed page. All right, so I will go to File, New, Website. All right, we did this last time. For our first few examples, I'm going to create an empty website. All right. Um, after we've done this a few times, we'll, we'll create one of the other ones and see what that does for you. Because that, that, again, that, that sort of gives you a head start. Uh, on a few things, but I, I want to start with the web forms I create now to kind of start at ground zero. And I'm going to use C Sharp in this. An empty website using C Sharp. And I'm going to put it on the desktop. And I'm going to call it component that's what this is. Alright. I go there and it's creating that folder for me and that folder is on the desktop. Let's take a look at it. Here it is. Notice how it looks a little different than other folders. Let's create another folder. That indicates that this folder is an ASP.NET application. All right, contains an ASP.NET application. Notice that the regular folder doesn't have that little thingy there. All right, not sure what that's meant to re represent, but what it means is that it's a .NET application. If we open this up, we will see that there is a web config <coughs> file. Now, one thing I strongly suggest in all my classes is if, if the extensions are being hidden, show them. All right? So I'm going to go and turn off hide extensions for known file types. And now we can see we have the web config file. We'll come more to that later on. Um, that contains a lot of parameters about this particular application. And we'll use that for a few things uh, later on. So what will you turn in? You will zip up the folder that contains that web config file. That folder that has this little different folder icon. All right, let's go in and let's create our first page. So I will go File, New, File. And I will pick a web form. And the first page should always be default.aspx. So if you only have one page, it should be default.aspx. If you have more than one page, then one page kind of serves the role of your home page, and it should be default.aspx. And then give your other pages appropriate names. By appropriate names, I don't mean default2.aspx or page1.aspx. I mean 
um, studentlisting.aspx or temperaturecalculator.aspx or give some meaning that really says what it is. All right. I mentioned before that you can um, that, that you can combine the two things into one file, but we're never going to do that. Doesn't matter what your text says, we're never going to do that. So therefore, you always want this box checked to place code in a separate file. That will give us the two files, the ASPX file and the ASPX.cs file. So I will click Add. It does its thing. And now you'll notice that I have my default ASPX and I have default ASPX.cs. It shows it like underneath it like that. All right. They're both files in that folder, but it shows it underneath that because this ASPX.x file is associated, oh, I'm sorry, this ASPX.cs file, yeah, is associated with this ASPX file. So it shows that there's some ownership there. In other words, this file is going to be used to manipulate the stuff that's on this user interface, this appearance. So, notice what I got. It created a shell of an HTML file for me. And we'll notice that what we have here is simply plain old HTML for the most part. This thingy up here is not plain HTML. All right, it's an ASP.NET directive that tells the web server, hey, we're using C Sharp here. And here is where my code file lives. All right. But the rest of the stuff, if you can see, is pretty much regular old HTML. Give it a title. All right, example of components. And now we can start coding our HTML. All right. So Maybe I'll put an H1 here that says first example of .NET components or common app dot components. All right. So I'm just putting in HTML. Nice thing about this is when you're in this mode, it does nice little niceties for you. It, it, it you know creates a closing tag when you create the opening tag. You know you can contract the tag if you're like not interested in what's going on in that tag. You know and it shows you the nesting of it. So it gives some nice benefits uh, from that. It also um, uh, has IntelliSense, so it can help you out. So for example, if you remember that H1s are top level headings, but you can't quite remember what a second level heading is. It's a joke. If you type in H, you can select from a list and say, ah, that's right, it's H2. All right. Okay. So now we're going to put a calendar control on there. Now, we could go and just type that in. Type in the code for an ASP.NET calendar control. I've been teaching this class I don't know how many years, and I don't remember exactly what you'd have to type in. We could figure it out, probably, but what we can do is we can go to our toolbox. Let's pin our toolbox up there. And I can go and I can drag that control into my code. So I want a calendar. I can go in and pop that control right there. Now let's let's see what it did. I'm going to eliminate the toolbox at least temporarily. It created this thing. This is the ASP.NET calendar control. Now you should notice a couple things about this. First of all, it looks sort of like an HTML tag, right? In that, you know, starting tag, ending tag. 
same sort of sequence, so less than sign, greater than sign, less than sign, slash, greater than sign. So it looks like an HTML tag, but it's not an HTML tag. And our easiest clue is it begins, the tag name starts ASPX colon. So when the, when the server sees ASP dot, dot, I'm sorry, when the server sees ASP colon, it knows, hey, that isn't a plain old HTML tag. This is a .NET component. Therefore, do not send that tag to the client. Instead, process that tag, turn that tag into HTML and CSS and JavaScript, and send that end result to the client. So the rest of this stuff here, this plain old HTML, just gets sent to the, to the client without any processing, right? There's nothing that, you, that needs to be done. That's already ready to go to the client. Because remember, the clients consume HTML. So it doesn't need to do anything to translate this div tag or this h1 tag or this h2 tag. But this ASP calendar tag is not an HTML tag. It needs processed. And it needs to be translated from that ASP.NET control to the appropriate HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. Yes? I must have looked down at my notebook for a sec, but how did you get that line in there? Well, let's, let's, go and, let's go and delete it, and we'll do it again. Oops. I went into Toolbox. No, how do I get my toolbox back? Pardon me? View. View, thank you. Yeah, toolbox, there we go. I open up my toolbox, and I simply drag that control. There's a list of all the different kinds of controls that you have. There are, con there are sort of your standard controls. There are controls that relate to database uh, connections. There are controls for validation, for navigation, and so on. So we went and drug over the calendar control and just popped it there. Now, we don't have to do it that way. We could type it in, right? And again, I, 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 I maybe overstated the case. I guess that's not that hard. I could have figured out how to, uh, how to uh, uh, type that in if I tried. All right, so now we have a page with a calendar on it. When we view it from the perspective of the server, though, we don't see the calendar. And we don't, let me rephrase that. We don't see the HTML tags that make up the calendar. We just see that .NET calendar uh, control. When I run this, then my development web server will transform this and any other .NET control into the appropriate HTML, JavaScript, and CSS. So if I go up here and click Run, it does its thing. Notice it's saying it's firing up a development web server. That's nice, so even if your machine at home doesn't have a web server, the Visual Studio has built into it a development web server. Server's thinking about it. And there it creates my calendar showing the current month by default and having these little arrows here that allow you to go the next month, go the previous month. Now, you could all probably write this, right? Might take a while, but you can all write this, but why bother? You have, as they say, you have bigger fish to fry. You have things that are specific to your application that have to get done, as opposed to something that's very generic like this. Yes? Can you do the source? Yeah. Well, we're going to do that in a second. Exactly. So, good point. Viewing the source. Other question? Yeah, I'm trying to understand what's going on in the server, on the server side. Uh-huh. There's server software that's, yep. that's reading that file. There's server software that's parsing it, that's reading it, that's looking at each line of it, and it's saying, is this an HTML tag? If so, it doesn't need to do any translation. It just sends it to the client. Okay? 
is this an HTML tag? No, it's an ASP.NET control. Okay, let me take that ASP.NET control and translate it into HTML. So what's that program called? That, that's the web server. That's, that, that's a web server. Okay. Um, that's a web server that is installed uh, and configured to use the .NET components. Okay. So is that part of .NET then? That's well, no. It is, it, it is part of a development server is part of Visual Studio. Okay, so if you notice, let's go back and do that. All right, I'll go back and let me stop debugging. Oh, it is already stopped. Let me click that. Watch, there'll be a little thing that pops up over here. Maybe. It did the first time. It was saying it was starting the development web server. Okay, I did see that. Yeah, and, and that's what it's doing. It, it, you know, the, the, the assumption is, is not every software developer is going to have a full-blown web server on their machine, on their laptop or on their desktop or whatever. So built in to uh, Visual Studio is like a little test development, however you want to put it, web server. That, that does the job of, a, of an actual web server in terms of taking the, those ASP.NET controls and translating them into the HTML. All right, now to Richard's question, what does the source look like? If we right mouse on this and say view source, we will see sort of the HTML we created, right? That was in the HTML we created. That was in the HTML. That was in the HTML. That was in the HTML. Ooh. This wasn't in the HTML we created. That's something that was generated. Um, this helps the um, web server keep track of this application and, and the state of this. We'll talk more about that later on. JavaScript. I didn't write no JavaScript, but guess what? Built in here is some JavaScript that allows us to change months. And that is a JavaScript that got generated here. There's some more stuff that it generates. There's my H1 and H2. Right? That was plain old HTML, so no translation was needed. Now, here is the table tags and everything else associated, the HTML associated with the calendar. Right, through here. So this block of HTML is the result of that ASP calendar, right? And if you look, it's just what you'd expect it to be, you know, maybe a few things that are, are curveballs, but it's a table, right? ID of calendar one, where did we see calendar one before? The ID of the ASP.NET control. So that ID it uses is the ID of the table that it creates. We can change that, of course, right? Yeah, sure. And so on down the line with the rest of the stuff. Questions about this? Yes. Can you write a table live about ASP Um. I should be able to. Can change my doc type.
there that's using an HTML5 tag. One second. Yes. If if that code, like you were just showing the little table, mm -hmm. if that comes back like after it went to the server, like like what if I want to change the font or the size, can you still somehow put the CSS on it? Oh absolutely. Like and then that absolutely. After? absolutely. Let's let's think that through. All right. I'll give you the good answer, then I'll give you the the cheap lazy answer. All right. <laughs> Maybe I shouldn't give you the cheap, lazy answer. It's up to you to find it. If you're going to use the lazy method, make your work to at least figure out the lazy method. All right. But the question was, is, is, is how we can, let's say the styles. Let's say we want to make the text of this blue. All right. Let's say our job is to make the text of this blue. How would we do that? Okay, we'd use CSS to do that. How would you do that? If you are creating a, st and here's, here's the, the question that, that you should ask yourself. If I wrote this static HTML page, all right, because this is what got delivered to the, the client, right? So this is my HTML page, all right? If I were writing this and this was my static HTML page, how would I make that calendar blue? A separate CSS file that would have an entry in it that says the thing that has an ID of calendar one make the text blue. Right? If this is my HTML code, that's how I'd write the CSS for it. I would just say, hey, pound sign calendar one, eh, do this. So let's now do that in .NET. Alright? So, To your question, this doesn't seem to be recognizing HTML5. I don't know if there's an older version or not, but it's griping about that article tag, which is legit. In, um, and it keeps saying it's not uh, valid in um, XHTML 1.0. Yes. Could it be because they came out with 2012 version of Visual Studio? Because I saw that on their DreamSpark oh, website. No, it could or, be that I didn't. <laughs> well, could be yeah. too, it just had I would think 2012 it. would definitely address it. Uh, I'm not sure why this is not. But if you notice, even though it warned me about the validation error, I can ignore it. And, and, you know, I can get it to work. All right, now to the question of the style sheet. All right, let's go in and say file, new, file. Style sheet. And I'll give it a name. My style, and, and I'll go and I'll put in <coughs> my style rule to say, hey, the thing that has an ID of calendar one, I want to make the color blue. Now, of course, I have to go in here and I have to tell this to use that style sheet. So I'll say link rel equals style sheet type e equals text.css. href equals my style and we're good to go. Alright. 
Now